Greetings and salutations, maggots. It's me, Postal Cat. Today, I've gathered a couple of buddies to look over a couple of articles and documents. And boy, is this a doozy. To start from the very beginning, between now and August 1st of last year, Cody Wilson was forced to resign from Defense Distributed because he was entrapped by a teenage thought who lied about her age. Except when she wasn't actually a teenage thought and was 17, meeting the age of consent in the state of Texas, and how she had a premium account on an adult dating website which requires you to be 18 to sign up, despite being 17 and supposedly living with her parents still, and Cody Wilson being a crypto anarchist, naturally of course, he spends $500 of traceable money with some random bitch he meets on a dating website that he doesn't apparently ask any questions about beforehand and goes to a motel despite him being single and owning property, who on top of that understood that the state was watching him and that he needed to be cautious. We know this because his entire reasoning behind printing a 3D gun was to get the media into hysterics and unwittingly advertising decentralization to a mass audience. Plus, months prior, he himself said that the state was going to try and defame him in a manner like this. He even used sexually predatory crimes as an example. Point is, the state story has more holes in it than a block of Swiss cheese. However, it seems that unfortunately, despite how transparently obvious that this is fake, the damage to his reputation was done and can't be undone, regardless of how thoroughly debunked the state's accusation may be. The fact that they even tried this should surprise absolutely no one. Unlike Ross Ulbrich, it wouldn't do any good to throw him in a cage though, because if DD were to go down, the files would still be online and anyone can still print a gun if they have a 3D printer. So all they're left with is character assassination and slander. And sure enough, that's what they tried. Why he wasn't tried and just let go seems to be a mystery. Maybe it was just a show of force to try and scare people, or perhaps Perhaps they knew they fucked up their narrative too badly to actually pursue the case since even normies were pointing out the inconsistencies, along with the fact that even according to their own standards, he didn't break any laws. Well anyway, not even the state could expect this to stop Defense Distributed, or anyone else who wants to make gun control unenforceable. Especially since Double D made absolutely damned certain that it would continue on without him. And especially since all the gun blueprints have already been mirrored on multiple websites. Not just the Liberator, but also guns that require a metal 3D printer, like an AR-10, an AR-15, semi-automatic pistols chambered in 9mm and 45 ACP, a Kalashnikov look-alike known as the VZ-58, and similar weapons that we know pretty damn certain that the state does not want civilians to own. And his actions have likely inspired others to do the same, to create gun blueprints and publish them online. Before the state took Cody Wilson out of the picture, his actions exemplified what one must do in order to humiliate the state in front of its own subjects. In other words, the propaganda of the deed. Mr. Wilson began when he invented the Liberator, a 3D printed plastic gun named after a similar weapon created during World War II. Even though this gun did not get used very much by the resistance, the mere act of dropping them into occupied territory was an effective form of psychological warfare against Nazi Germany. Likewise, the modern Liberator is a single shot pistol, one that required you to replace the barrel after each shot. Even though this gun is even more fragile and impractical to use than a musket, it still scared the ever-loving shit out of the government, and they went through great lengths to take the Liberator offline. However, the plans went viral, and got mirrored on other websites. Despite his success with getting the Liberator to go viral, Cody Wilson did not want to stop there. He did not just take the government's attempt at censorship lying down. He sued the State Department, 
and along the way, he scored several victories, like when the government admitted that any semi-automatic weapon, 50 caliber and under, was not a weapon of war, and therefore should not be restricted. Or when they completely embarrassed themselves by exposing to the world the lengths they would go to to prevent gun blueprints from being published online, which of their own laws they would break, how much of their excrement they were willing to wipe onto the Constitution. We can't pretend this law we're talking about is any surprise. Anyone paying attention late summer 2018 remembers the controversy Defense Distributed was embroiled in when the U.S. federal government stopped preventing Cody Wilson and Defense Distributed from uploading CAD files for 3D printing code online, for printing your own firearms that were completely untraceable to the state. We knew full well that the government wasn't just going to roll over and accept that their ability to disarm the population is now utterly unenforceable. Maybe they already know this, but we can't assume everyone in the government is in constant telepathic communication with one another, knowing what each other know. These laws serve two purposes that I'm sure they're aware of. One, keep the bureaucrats happy the ones who think that they can legislate our way into utopia. If we just ban the right amount of things, everything's gonna be perfect. More devious bureaucrats will see a powerful psychological tool. Laws like these imply law enforcement, which in the minds of normies who are just trying to go about their day and not cause any trouble will immediately scare them into thinking, yes, the government can, in fact, track 3D printed guns, and that the freedom gained from ensuring your own safety from criminals and a tyrannical government, but I repeat myself, is not worth the risk of being caught by law enforcement. This is obviously not the case, but if you haven't already parsed out what we're talking about, the state of New Jersey wants to ban 3D printed guns, meaning the manufacture, sale, distribution, and possession of a weapon created from a 3D printer as well as a distribution of the code to 3D print guns will be considered a crime according to the priesthood of statism in the California of the East Coast. Actually, no. Wouldn't New York State be East Coast California? Or is the entirety of New England just California? Alright guys, let's take a look at the video in which these bastards signed the spill into law. And importantly, to prevent the next Sandy Hook, the next Aurora, Colorado, the next Oak Creek, the next Las Vegas, Parkland, Pittsburgh, and now Thousand Oaks. And today we're doing that by closing dangerous loopholes in our existing laws. You some bitches couldn't close an umbrella. Loopholes that some companies and individuals have tried to exploit. The loophole he's talking about is of course, not only the Second Amendment, but also the First Amendment. According to these guys, the Constitution doesn't mean shit if it gets in the way of what they want. Don't forget that the Fourth Amendment is also involved in the loophole, since these morons want to arm cops while disarming private citizens. And while the citizens are disarmed, the cops can get away with literally anything, including violating our Fourth Amendment rights. The loophole? is that if these laws were as effective as deterring crime as they thought, then why don't they just outlaw murder? This summer, for example, a Texan named Cody Wilson promised to publicly release computer files that would let anyone, even terrorists, felons, and domestic abusers, create firearms using a 3D printer. Not only those guys, but also peaceful, otherwise law-abiding citizens who are willing to break a few laws for the sake of their own well-being because they realize that they cannot count on the state to uphold their rights. In other words, self-reliance and intelligence, two very important character traits. These guns would have no serial numbers, meaning that they would be untraceable, making it more difficult for our law enforcement officers to solve gun crimes. And because some of these weapons would be made entirely of plastic, they wouldn't necessarily activate metal detectors. That meant these weapons would be particularly appealing to anyone trying to access a secure facility, whether it was a courthouse, an airport, or a government building. Correction. 
Only the Liberator can be printed with a plastic 3D printer. The others require a milling machine or a metal 3D printer in order to make. On top of that, the Liberator was nothing more nor less than a proof of concept. It would be utterly useless in the vast majority of cases, even self-defense ones. The only purpose of the Liberator was to scare the shit out of the government and to inspire other crypto-anarchists to improve on it. And it's working. By the way, if a crime ever gets committed by someone with a Liberator, just let me know, okay? And so back in July, we successfully challenged Cody Wilson in court. We obtained legal orders that temporarily halted the release of these codes. But his supporters are not relenting. They're still trying to release these codes online. They've already been released online. They've been mirrored on multiple websites, and they've been downloaded thousands, if not millions, of times, despite your best efforts to stop it. Suck it down, bitch! Once it's on the internet, it's on the internet forever. Politicians have to be either deliberately ignoring the obvious, which is that they can't enforce any regulation on file sharing or peer-to-peer -peer associations in general, or they're just delusional. Their response to this makes one truth self-evident to the average citizen, however, which is that the state possesses a monopoly on violence and is incapable of having competition, and all it can do is try and coerce people who challenge their interests. Tools like the, le le excuse me, tools like the legislation crafted by Senator Cryan and that Governor Murphy is signing today. But it's not just about printable guns. We have similar concerns about the so-called ghost gun industry. Huh, <laughs> ghost gun. That term really displays the level of fear presented by bootlickers and politicians when they can't just ban something that they don't like, or even when they simply refer to the said unbannable thing. I personally think it sounds kind of badass. Ghost gun. I have to give some credit to whoever coined it. At least the t definition of the term ghost gun is far more clear and less ambiguous an assault weapon. These folks know that they can't sell their weapons, weapons like assault weapons, into New Jersey. How many times do we have to explain to you idiots that the term assault weapon is a made-up unicorn term? But hey, whatever fits your narrative, I guess. Along with being extremely vague, to the point where any gun could be called an assault weapon, like how the birds in the BS counted a ordinary handgun as an assault weapon, or even a pump-action shotgun could be classified as such. A good rule of thumb. If someone says that they want to ban assault weapons but not all guns, they are liars. So instead, they sell all the parts for these weapons, and then provide a link to a video that shows you how to build them at home. So they essentially sell you weapons that you couldn't otherwise buy in the Garden State. And they sell you these weapons without conducting any background checks. Ha! <laughs> Good luck trying to ban these parts. I don't think you realize that these gun manufacturers are going to figure out ways to design these guns differently following the bans. And what's more, you think that adding even more regulation is going to somehow make these guns go away and the gun manufacturers will behave. I mean, is that right? You think that the state can magically make all of that happen? That is stupid. They also have the incentive to create these parts to be more efficient and less costly due to the profit motive for this unregulated industry, which basically means that the government can't do anything because the reason this new industry is unregulated is because of its decentralization. And they sell you these weapons without serial numbers on them. So we can't trace them or link them to their owners when they're found in connection with gun crimes. Their conduct poses a serious and immediate threat to the community and to our law enforcement officers. The only thing it poses a threat to is your power. But they believe that they can do all of this with impunity because they're not technically selling fully assembled assault weapons. And so they incorrectly believe that our firearms laws don't apply to them. How much more do we have to say it before we get it through your thick ass status skulls that we don't care what your laws say, your laws are tyrannical, that you think you're justified in dictating what peaceful people can and cannot own as property 
or what kind of computer code they can share on the internet is fundamentally unjust. I mean, why should I respect your laws when you don't even respect the laws your own priesthood wrote in the U.S. Constitution's Bill of Rights? So earlier this year, we went after some of the biggest players in this industry. We told them that they were wrong on the law. We told them that they were in fact breaking the law here in New Jersey by selling those weapons here. And we told them to stop. Oh, like you? You think you can sit on your high horse and lecture the rest of us about how evil it is for us to disregard your arbitrary laws, laws which directly violate the First and Second Amendments of the Bill of Rights, or even federal decrees that allow Double D to publish their gun blueprints, decrees that were passed solely to save face because they embarrassed themselves in their constant legal battles with Cody Wilson? Either you have no self-awareness at all, or you think we're fucking retarded not to immediately see the hypocrisy of you violating your own laws to maintain your power. See, this is exactly why we are anarchists. We recognize the fact that the state cannot be counted on to obey their own constitution, unless they are forced to do so, either by competitors in the free market, or by guns to their heads. While we do support the ideals found in the Bill of Rights, our problem is, there is hardly any way to hold the government responsible for flouting its own constitution, other, other than violent revolution. And some of them complied, but others did not, and so those investigations are ongoing at this time. But in both of those cases, bad actors were trying to take advantage of loopholes because no laws squarely address printable guns or ghost guns. So we had to rely on other laws, like our public nuisance law or our assault weapons law, to fight back. Even if you're obeying the law to the best of your ability, if the state wants to throw you in jail for any reason, they'll go out of their way to find which of the three felonies you committed today they can prosecute. This isn't law and order. This is a legal code that has been weaponized against you. My question to those of you who still think we need a status theocracy to maintain law and order, what are you afraid of? Because what the Attorney General of the state of New Jersey just admitted is that in his state, they don't have law and order. Now don't get me wrong, those laws are important and they're great tools and they helped us stop the spread of these dangerous untraceable weapons. right on point strengthens law enforcement's hand even more. Because prohibition works so well, that's why the drug war has stopped all drug interactions and transactions, or why Al Capone was poor. Wait a minute. In short, prohibition doesn't work because people like myself exist. It's so laughable that they think that more prohibition is going to somehow solve the problem. I noticed that he said that it will strengthen law enforcement's hand even more, quote unquote. You know what that means? It means that when a cop does something and gets away with it, we get to listen to these gun grabbers throw a huge temper tantrum, but yet keep supporting even more status policies that accomplish nothing but empowering the state even more. I mean, are these nuts listening to themselves? They know exactly what they're doing. They're only virtue signaling when they cry about police brutality. They don't give two shits about police brutality. I don't even think these people could be so retarded as to believe that gun control will reduce police brutality, or that gun control is anything else but gun monopolization by the state. And so today there is no question that printable guns and ghost guns are deadly, and selling them in New Jersey is illegal. It's also illegal to do exactly what it is you're doing right now, but of course, you're not going to say that out loud. And here's my message today to anyone who is contemplating making a printable gun, or to the next ghost gun company trying to sell their dangerous weapons into New Jersey. 
Your products are unlawful, and if you break our laws, we will come after you. And to anyone else who thinks of trying to find other loopholes in our laws, especially to sell dangerous firearms, we're just as committed to stopping each of you. The safety of our residents, the safety of our law enforcement officers, demands nothing less. Now, if this statist fuckstain was even remotely honest about his motives, this is what he would say. I've got something to say to all those meanie head crypto anarchists who insist on exercising their First and Second Amendment rights. We are above the law. We are above the Constitution. We can do whatever the fuck we want, and we'll do whatever we need to to keep it that way. What? The blueprints have already gone viral? Well, don't you dare mention it, or I'll cry so loud you'll bleed out of your ears! <laughs> Yeah, I think we're done with the video. Actually, let's be a bit more on the nose and read the bill as they wrote it. The bill defines a three-dimensional printer to mean any computer or device which can hold code during the manufacturing process, and distribute, according to the bill, is defined as any verb connected with human communication. Also. The bill defines a silencer as any instrument, attachment, weapon, or appliance for causing the firing of any gun, revolver, pistol, or other firearm to be silent, or intended to lessen or muffle the noise of firing of any gun, revolver, pistol, or other firearm, even though so-called silencers, correctly termed suppressors, are meant to conceal the muzzle flash and not make the weapon quieter. In case the bureaucrats' ignorance of what they're legislating about wasn't already obvious. I mean, sure, suppressors do make the weapon quieter, but not by that much. And definitely not enough to cause firearms to be silent. Alright, this is gonna be six. Target in the middle. Here we go. Hello. Did that sound silent to you at all? The actual name for a silencer is a suppressor, and contrary to popular belief, they are safety features. When a gun is fired, it is usually dangerous to the eardrum, so a suppressor takes the audio of the gun being fired from its original sound to about 120 decibels if we are talking about a standard AR-15 or most other rifles. This level of sound is safer for the eardrum, but is still louder than your teammates when you play Rainbow Six Siege ranked. So if the broad range of their language didn't already raise some red flags, full pun intended, then when you actually read what the bill proposes keeping these definitions in mind, you might actually crap your pants if you're even slightly less authoritarian than Stalin. It is a third degree crime for, to, a person to distribute by any means, including the internet, to a person in New Jersey who is not registered as a manufacturer or digital instructions in the form of computer-aided design files or other code or instructions that may be used to program a three-dimensional printer to manufacture or produce a firearm, firearm receiver, magazine, or firearm component. Sell, or to manufacture, give, provide, lend, trade, mail, deliver, publish, circulate, disseminate, present, exhibit, display, share, advertise, offer, or make available via the internet or by any other means, whether for pecuniary gain or not, and includes an agreement or attempt to distribute. Now, I'm not even going to get into the use of the term assault firearm, which if it wasn't already clear to you that the people who wrote this bill don't have any fucking idea what they're talking about, now the mind-boggling levels of anti-gun dishonesty these politicians are on should be quite obvious. But a literal interpretation of this bill would essentially outlaw the use of social media entirely. So politicians would literally try to ban the internet just to try and stop people from obtaining guns. And I fucking dare you to try and tell me this is about crime or how much they care about public safety. And to clarify, there's no way the politicians are going to outlaw the internet. 
But this bill is so broad that it is clearly not enforceable because banning social media would require an amount of resources which is dubious if the entire federal government would be able to pull together, let alone the state of New Jersey. On top of that, people would just start creating mesh networks and associating through encrypted connections like how people in Cuba access the internet. So the only practical use of this by the state is very clearly going to be selectively enforcing this on file sharing websites, which the state doesn't approve of. Here's a spicy meatball. Any person who manufactures, causes to be manufactured, transports, ships, sells, or disposes of a bumps dot 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 or a trigger crank dot 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 is guilty of a crime of the third degree. Besides the obvious redundancy in how bump stocks are already banned by bureaucratic fiat in the federal government, thanks Trump, the state of New Jersey has decreed if a bump stock comes into your possession, throwing it away is now a crime. It's a federal crime to possess one, and if you want to comply with government legislation because you live in New Jersey, you're out of luck I'm afraid. Can anyone tell me how many lives would have been saved by a ban? on people throwing away bump stocks? I'd really like to know. Can't get rid of them, can't own them, and there are thousands of people who are trapped with them currently since the federal ban was just last week. Gee, heretic, seems like they know this is unenforceable, and this is actually just a desperate excuse to throw people in cages and grab some cash by collecting fines. You'd think eventually one of the priests of statism would figure out that you can't milk tax cattle that's locked away. Guess not. Bump stocks are any device or instrument for a firearm that increases the rate of fire achievable with the firearm by using energy from the recoil of the firearm to generate a reciprocating action that facilitates repeated activation of the trigger. Literally anything that accomplishes the goal of using energy of recoil to pull the trigger fits this definition. There's people who have done this with nails on wood. You could turn your belt buckle into a bump stock, a piece of wood, and even your own finger. Yes, all of us have made the point many times before, but I just want to really hit home how absolutely ridiculous this law is. While true bump stocks can be 3D printed, Everyone has something they can use as a bump stock for a semi-automatic weapon, and no number of bans are going to change that. But we all know why these authoritarians want to write it into their laws. A ban against bump stocks, no matter how redundant, unenforceable, or ridiculous it is. When they give us that inch, that bump stock ban, we will take a mile. They should know pretty darn well that bump stock bans, by themselves, are unenforceable. The only true way to enforce the law, to prevent people from bump firing their guns, is to ban semi-automatic guns entirely. Though one of my favorites so far is their description of a pistol grip. Pistol grip means a well-defined handle, similar to that found on a handgun, that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon, and which permits the shotgun to be held and fired with one hand. Uh-oh, retard alert! Retard alert, class! Don't adjust your computer monitor. Don't adjust your speaker settings. You've read this right. You've heard this correctly. Have these idiots ever held a gun before? Who the fuck would want to shoot any sort of carbine, rifle, or shotgun with one hand? Just how stupid do they think we are? I mean, I want to, but I know how heavy a rifle is and firing it one-handed is just a good way to get to the hospital. The only time that anyone has ever shot a rifle with one hand is either in Call of Duty or if they're a cartoon character, which is actually pretty fitting since the only time gun control could ever come close to stopping crime is in fiction, and even then, good luck trying to make it work without creating several inconsistencies in your story. Or maybe we're being too generous because not even that happens all that often in movies or video games. If not even the muscle-bound action hero wants to wield a rifle or a shotgun with one hand, why on earth would anyone else want to do so? 
The funniest part about this band is the absolute degree of unrealistic expectations it follows. For instance, this regulation on 3D printing will only make it more valuable for crypto anarchists to print and sell them, which causes more of an incentive to buy and sell them because of the increased scarcity. Just look at a supply and demand chart for God's sakes. Even the Supreme Court came to the conclusion that it's impossible to regulate this growing market. Honestly, they are going through a lot of trouble to protect some gun industry monopolies. The National Rifle Association? You know, the guys complained about constantly by progressives, SJWs, and generally the people who whine about how the Democrat Party isn't progressive enough but will reliably vote for whatever neoliberal globalist candidates they put forward anyways. Yeah, they showed where they stand on your gun rights when they admitted to supporting gun control legislation in 1988 that, at least according to them, already makes 3D printed guns illegal. Why they would do this, I can only speculate. But the firearms industry giants that fund the NRA have an interest in making sure their business model isn't innovated out of existence, with individuals having the means to become their own firearms manufacturer. Not all of them. Some of them realize that the NRA doesn't represent their interests at all, and have abandoned them in response to the bump stock ban that the NRA pushed. David Hogg is absolutely correct when he says that the NRA is losing money, but he wrongly assumes that it's because more people support gun control. The real reason is because more and more people realize that the NRA doesn't go nearly far enough in their supposed support for gun rights, so they turn to other organizations for that. So yes, David Hogg, gloat all you want about your supposed victory over your controlled opposition. You still got defense distributed, the Second Amendment, Foundation, the GOA, and a small army of crypto anarchists to worry about. And they have succeeded where the NRA has failed, at least when it came to doing what the American people expected it to. Another thing I want to briefly mention about the NRA is their allegiance to cops. They are reluctant to criticize cops who violate our Second Amendment rights, along with our Fourth Amendment rights. Which is why I, myself, don't take the NRA seriously, because they aren't worried about the Second Amendment. And don't be surprised if they become a gun control group in the future, because they have been increasingly compromising the individual's rights to own a gun, such as support for background checks and their support for Trump's bump stock ban. Did the NRA or the Republican Party ever support gun rights? I think not, but that's a video for another time. In fact, that will be my next episode of Gun Grabbers Say the Darndest Things. Watching gun control advocates jerk between the NRA is evil and gun laws are so lax because of NRA lobbying and conservatives are inconsistent in their beliefs because the NRA is an organization which supports strict state regulations on guns at the drop of a hat is one hell of a mind trip and it's just another one of the various ways their arguments don't make any sense up to or including the point of being self-contradictory. I think you can already tell that New Jersey has been absolutely cucked to hell and back at this point. But what's even worse is HR 7115, which is being pushed by the same assholes who wrote the anti-gun laws for New Jersey. I'm not going to waste my time going over HR 7115, it's very similar to what we've already covered. It's bad enough that New Jersey wants to impose this crap onto everybody else. But what's worse is that they've already succeeded in doing that even before they started to push HR 7115, to the point where Defense Distributed had to file a restraining order against the state of New Jersey. If there's any good that has come out of this at all, it is the fact that throughout this entire episode, the state has once again openly told us the truth about which of their own laws they are willing to break what parts of the constitu Constitution they are willing to ignore, and what else they want to do in order to maintain its stranglehold on the civil liberties of the average person, all the while lying to our faces that they simply want to keep their communities safe. 
To be fair, it is in the best interest of the state to violate every single rule that people expect it to abide by. The state is a competitor in the market like everyone else, although it has legitimized the notion that it is, it is the sole monopoly on arbitration. This is why the state always expands, so that competition provided by the market cannot threaten the state's existence. Eventually, the politicians who run the state will just decide to strip away the general populace's ability to defend themselves so that no one can question the legitimacy of their monopoly, or at least act on it. This is why Cody Wilson's situation is so important, because he has made it impossible for the state to regulate firearm ownership and has also made it impossible to track. So now, every gun-grabbing law enforcer has to live in fear that they may get shot at any door that they come across. Just remember that, folks. When you trade your freedom for more security, don't expect to get it back, and when you vote to allow the state to infringe on other individuals' rights, your rights are also getting infringed. And this hearing will bring New Jersey's case to the eyes of the public. Just like the federal government, New Jersey will be forced to relent, for no other reason than to save face. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm excited to see the state of New Jersey make an ass of itself in court. Oh, who the fuck am I kidding? I know damned well you're just as excited as I am. Because as we all know, it worked so well for the state and the media last time they thought they could assassinate Cody Wilson's character and scare people away from 3D printing. So well, in fact, that 3D printer sales in 2018 went up 80%. Producers who bought 3D printers reported a 93% increase in profits related to innovation, a 70% increase in investment into companies which create 3D printers, and many of the 3D printers are being purchased for recreational use. Oh wait, what's that? It didn't work out. In fact, one could argue it kind of backfired, like harder than when the state usually tries to do something and it backfires on them. They inadvertently mainstreamed 3D printing and the DIY gun industry, both of which are going to harm the state due to their counter-economic implications. So grab some popcorn, because if 2018 was fun, it looks like 2019 is gonna be a fucking blast for gun rights if shit like this is happening this early on.